Welcome to another exciting episode of the original Red Pill Show, comrade. Today is Monday, January 20th, 2020. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only please use at your own risk this show is copyrighted written whatever by moi no part of it can be reused rebroadcasted in any way shape or form without my written consent or you can just ask finally this show is opinionated. That's why I do it. Under no circumstances whatsoever should opinions ever be taken as advice. If you are seeking professional advice, we strongly encourage you to hire a license if required person. In his or her feel weird old Tommy. Hey man. No. That's his name. Broadcasting live this Monday morning on Freedom Revolution Network and from the lovely little town, cute little town of. Loveland, Colorado. How's it going, man? How you doing? I'm doing just wunderbar after a pretty eventful weekend, which I'm going to share. Uh oh, I have to. Uh, just a little heads up. This computer is acting like an IBM mainframe from the '60s, '70s, maybe. It's taken me 20 minutes just to get this thing to work. I think I'm going to need a new pewter here sooner than later. But I have a lot to share. <laughs> and I'm going to because that's what we do here in this show is share. I had no idea. What the hell we're going to talk about. But I did see some movies. And I'm going to share that. Might be surprised on that. Okay, so that's open. So Google Voice is opening. So I don't know. I guess we can get into it now. Are you listening, Melissa? Is the video videoing? Is the flux capacitor fluxing, Doc? I think so. I think it's all working. Todd, your weekend. Really good. What's going on? This is flashing. What does that mean? I'm still trying to figure all this shit out, man. Uh, do, do, do. Good morning. There it is. Good, good morning to you. Well, at least something's working. Good morning, Melissa. You can call. You can call whenever the hell you want. Good morning. Okay. See who we get in here. So early in the morning. Why do I do this so early? I don't even have to be up, man. Really? You didn't even get fucking paid for this shit. Okay, whatever. Actually, it just cost me 45 bucks, which I just paid, Melissa. So check your email. It should have told you that. Mine just did. Then I sent the payment. Okay, so I saw a couple movies. Let me make sure this works. I had my coffee. Eight one five two nine zero zero nine one two. Oh, and I need tomorrow off again. Sorry, I have to start very early for my yab. From my yab, man, at 6 a.m. So, is this working? Don't look like it. Yes, it is. There it is. Okay, so that works. 
So that works. So I don't know how I can get into this. Is this still ringing? Stop. Up oh, there's on my wrist. How far are you? Oh, how whoa. May I take your order, please? Oops, wrong one. It, it probably works. How whoa. What's that? I said it finally worked. What's that? Everything? The phone. At oh. the moment. Why? <laughs> you, you called a couple times and you couldn't get through? Yeah. Isn't it? It weird? just went straight. It went to voice now. Isn't it weird? I don't, I don't know. It's technology. It, technology has a mind of its own. Well, it this, com- this computer, this computer, this Sony BIOS... If I had to guess, at least six, if not eight years old. Mm-hmm. And you can tell when it's booting up if you know enough about computers like you do and all the config sys and everything that's fucking loaded into RAM and all that. You can just tell there's so much stuff being loaded in the memory on this thing that it's just chugga, 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 chugga. It takes this computer probably three or four minutes to f- fully boot up. Uh, do you want me to hook up later and take a look at it? Clean it up some? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I, yeah, that would help because I really don't want to go buy a new computer, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's really, it's really getting to the point where, you know, it's like a car. My car is the same situation. I get a 2009 Scion which was my son's car, and it's, he beat the hell out of it. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, number one, it's not my car, but due to life on life's terms, it's what I ended up with, and it's like someday I'm going to need another, not a brand new car, but, you know, a new car to me, and it's just like, it's that type yeah. of thing. Things are starting to hit at once, but, but yeah, that'd be cool. That's how they usually do. What's that? That's how they usually do. Yeah. I said that's how they usually do. Yep. Hit all at once and try to turn your life upside down for a little while, and then everything works fine again. Well, ironically, too, it'll be two years in April. I'll be here, which is going to be here before you know it. And uh, I'm staying because I told, well, unless something really drastic happens by April, but I highly doubt it. But uh, I'm not going anywhere. And I went looking to move on up in the world and in a nicer apartment right down the street. And mm-hmm. it's just like, really? It's like, rent is just astronomical up here. Rent's astronomical no matter where you're at in Colorado. Yeah. I'm finding that out. Yeah. It, it's not pleasant. I mean, it we was... such a wonderful state, but our yeah. rentals are horrible. Yeah, well, these people are going to create a bub- bubble and nobody's going to be able to live here and, and it's all going to come crashing down because you just can't keep jacking. It's not that overpopulated. Uh, it's uh, nowhere no, near it's like not. this. No, they're overreacting. How many they're... empty places do we have? Well, I don't know what the vacancy because rate the is. Or, yeah, I don't know what the occupancy rate is, but yeah, it, it's it's to the point where people just can't, can't afford it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making... Put it this way: What I do as a high-level service technician in the HVAC and refrigeration industry, I should be making at least forty-five bucks an hour, and I don't care about sharing. I'm making thirty-one, and I'm going to tell wow. you, I'm going to yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now <laughs> that rent here, depending on where you go, but rent here and definitely the price of a home is way, mm-hmm. way, way. A four hundred fifty thousand dollar house, maybe if you're lucky, is three twenty five. Back in Illinois, in the same kind of like Fort Collins, Loveland type of community, city, village, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's off the charts. Our housing here is absolutely ridiculous. Well, they better knock it off because there's going to be a mass (laughs) exit. There's going to be a max exodus, like Illinois, except it's not going to be because of. The government selling pot and taxing the shit out of everything. It it's housing, and I think, I think. The formula is if you're paying more than thirty percent of your income, in housing, that's when things start getting, yeah. challenging. 
that's what we were all raised with. Right. Now, kids today, not so much. But back in our day, yeah, that's what we were taught was 30%. Well, kids know everything. If, you, if you're paying 30% for your rent, then you should be fine as far as your bills. Right. Who's but Jennifer? that doesn't exist anymore. Who's Jennifer? I'm looking at the chat. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're right. I'll get back into it. I got ADD. You know that. Who's Jennifer? Guess Jennifer. I have no idea. I said good morning, but she didn't say anything back. Well, good morning. Hello, Jennifer. I'm wondering if it's my friend Jennifer in Kentucky. Is she going to marry your brother? Will she marry me? She's already married. Oh, damn it. Figures. Story of my life. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah, you and I are those single people who all our friends are married, so. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? No offense. Every time I get around them, like the other day I went to the movies with a, a dear f couple of mine, and no offense, and just the, the little jabbing in the in the, in the little... I want to call it micro fighting or spat, marriage spat. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I don't miss this at all. <laughs> no, thank you. No, they. There's times I'm kind of jealous because of the love and you know the playfulness between them, but then they get in a fight, and then I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm not married. That's why I'm single. Yeah, it's like busy, 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 busy. It was as simple as we were at the movies, which I want to get into. So I tell you, I saw two movies, and uh, well, one. Yeah, I'm anxious to hear which ones you saw. One and a half, I saw, because I I got to one early and I left early, but for no other reason but piss poor time management. I'm my end, because uh, I'm writing I'm writing a book, and it's really fascinating, um, when you're writing a book, how time flies. And I've never wrote a book in my life, and I'm like, oh my god, and like an hour just went by, like bam, and I'm like, uh oh, I got to go to the movies, so. But um, yeah, we were we were at the movie theater, and my friend had a straw, and she goes, she had her hands full, popcorn in one hand, straw in the other. She says to her husband, "Can you open this?" And then he just looked at it, and she goes, "Can you open that?" And he goes, "It, it's not open." She goes, "I know, I want you to open it." And he goes. Oh, I thought you said it was open. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, you know what? I'm <laughs> walking away from this. This is just ridiculous. I don't miss stupid shit like that. Just Fights are usually 99% just stupid, and that was one of them. Yeah. I don't, don't miss it. Oh, yeah. Don't miss it at all. So I'm like, I just walked away, and I'm like, no, I now I know why I'm single. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whatever. Those little annoyances. Oh, come on, really? Oh, argue, arguing over a straw, which should be illegal. You should outlaw straws. Anyway, it's a joke. I have my metal straws. Yeah, you know what? I saw that. It, it's funny you say that because that popped in my head. I was at Come and Go, and they had like four stainless ones for five bucks. And, you know, yeah. there's more pressing problems than straws in the world. But I did look at those, and I go, you know, that's really a good idea. So We, we got some by accident. And I friggin' love them. I keep yeah. one of the bent ones and one of the straight ones on my desk. And I always have a straw available. Yeah. Cool. All right. So anyway, uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Yeah. So kids, yeah. kids know right. everything. Why? Why would thirty percent be different now? Because you said it, it's different. Thirty percent of your income well, because, to live. Because there, there is no job. Well, I, I won't say there's no jobs. There are most normal jobs, like normal people jobs, <laughs> do oh. not, they don't, you can't pay the rent on 30%. Oh, of what Especially they're making. It's only one income. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And what I'm making at 31 an hour, I mean, when I had my own business, I don't want to brag, but I I was paying myself salary of 100 bucks an hour. So I was making four grand a week. And <laughs> Nice. Yeah, well, well, yeah, but there's a lot of reasons why. It wasn't just well, yeah. because I had two mortgages and car payments and blah, 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 because the more you make, the more the government tax you. But then in oh, order yeah. to save taxes, you got to buy more shit, which is tax deductions, which is another house and all this crap. And it's like, well, OK, and that's what I had to do, because if I didn't take it in salary, I, I would have got taxed on profit of the company because I was an S-corp. So right. you're going to get fucked either way. So Yeah. 
So you just might as well buy something and earn and earn, and own it. Well, do you really own it? But I mean, pay for it and then have the tax deduction. But uh, yeah, it was just uh, believe me. I going back if I made a hundred grand a year, I would have been happier in hell. That's what I should have done. But we all learn by our mistakes, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Vividly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I could do That's it over again. That's actually how we ended up out here was uh, rent prices. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Go ahead. We have a three-bedroom house for less than a uh, grand, uh, grand amount. Yeah, that would be right up my alley. It's, it's either that or I get a roommate, but I just... Yeah. After I got... The, <laughs> yeah, after I got divorced, I moved six times and was technically homeless, and I was a gypsy and lived with friends and friends that are not longer friends anymore, roommates with fake marriage proposals that are no longer friends, and, and I've known them all my life, and it's like, you know... I I really do like living alone as much as it does suck sometimes. Right? Yeah. And I have to worry about someone walking up to me. I'm going to marry you at 818 of 08. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Okay, then. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no, I don't even. Uh, well, if it was a guy, I'd really have a problem with it. But, you know. But, uh, yeah, no, I just don't want that type of interaction yet. I mean, because what are you going to yeah. do? Thanks, but no thanks and move? <laughs> I mean, it's not a really good, really good situation to put yourself in. And one you really can't. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'd be lying to myself. See coming because I was nuts about her anyway and she knew it. But uh, whatever. So, I don't want to get into that. So anyway, what did you do? Before I get into what I did this weekend, um, I worked a lot. <laughs> Were you chatting a lot? Yes, I've, I've made a bunch of friends in in Ron's chat. Oh, really? Um, yeah, there's some really cool people in there. Hmm. And um, that's that's I worked on the boudoir site, and we've almost got that done and ready to go, and. Huh. She does amazing work. Oh, I love what I love sorting through all of her pictures. Really? Yeah. Wow, there's a lot she of does, she does men's boudoir too. And who's this? Her name is Elle, and she her business is Boudoir for All, and she's based out of Vegas. Oh, I and like Vegas. And she does incredible work. Oh my goodness. Like, what does she do? Boudoir photography. What's sexy that? Sexy photography. What is that? That's the the pictures you see of mostly of women um, in lingerie and in pretty poses and sexy poses. And, oh. Yeah. Porn stars. And she I'm makes it. It's a very, no. I, I was, I was, it's a joke. It's a very it was a joke. experience for most women. Yeah, well, you know what? Most women are insecure doing that, and I don't. Yeah. Uh, actually, I know a girl that um, she. Well, I don't want to get too technical because by some really weird reason it might get back to her, which I highly doubt. But uh, <laughs> she she was working out at the gym that I was working out at Gold's before I canceled my membership, and I haven't seen her for a while. And I ran into her. I said, "Hey, you know how's it going?" Blah 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 blah. And she's going to school to be a. Um, I don't get what she say in in law. She's getting a degree in law so she can practice law. Cool. And um, I said, I haven't seen you for a while. She goes, yeah, I haven't been at the gym. You haven't been at the gym. I haven't either. And I said, why? I canceled my membership. She goes, oh, okay. And, uh, oh, fuck. You know, I just drew a blank what I was going to say. What were we talking about? Oh, oh, oh! About, so about yeah, it being insecure. Yeah, being insecure. Sorry, Jesus. Duh. Hang out a second. Let me let me knock on my head. Hello, anybody here? <laughs> okay, it is Monday. So she goes. Well, um, I entered a bodybuilding competition, and I said, "Really?" Oh, cool. And I and I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "And I got first place in my um my class or whatever." Wow, congrats. That's Those what I tough. said, and I high-fived her. You know, she's beautiful, great shape. That She's probably in her early 20s, whatever, but I'm not going to say that's bad or good. It is what it is. And uh, 
I said, why didn't you tell anybody? He's like, you really didn't, you worried about what people thought? And she goes, yeah, honestly, I did. And I'm like, well, I don't know why. You know what? See, that should tell you everything you need to know right there. Right. The fact that somebody who won a freaking bodybuilding contest. Yes. Is ashamed. Yeah, amateur why? first level. I, You know what? But not all women, or all people for that matter, are that insecure, but a lot of them are. Yeah. They're, they're, they don't... Oh, yeah. They don't want to... Um, they don't want anybody to see them like that because they, I guess, don't want to see them like that. So that take, that takes a lot of courage and balls for someone to um, to do that. It's really cool. I like mm -hmm. it. But, yeah, see what happened? It really does. She didn't take a chance yeah. and busted her butt and worked out and gave it a shot. She never would have known. But it was scary that she didn't want to share that with anybody, which is her business. But she did say yeah, yes when I. That's a major accomplishment. I know. I mean. I know. I used to work for a bodybuilding contest back in New Mexico. Damn. And and it was amazing. It was freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, and I worked out with a lot of the guys that were in the contest. And so I saw them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And they have those same issues, too. Even men have that issue. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's not gender specific at all. No, no. definitely not. Yeah. We have such a ridiculous idea of what beauty is, especially here in the U.S. Yep. Yeah, guys are a little more full of themselves when they finally start getting results and everything. But I, um, I shared this before. But if I if I did here, then I apologize. But when I was going through my divorce, I went to Vegas because I had to look at the second house that we had there, and I just wanted to get away, so I went by myself. And there's mirrors everywhere, and no matter what hotel you stay at in, in Vegas. And I got out of the shower, and I stayed, stood in front of the full-length mirror, and I'm like, wow. I go, Tim, you got some work to do. So <laughs> if you think you're all that, just stand naked in a full-length mirror, front and back, <laughs> and just look at yourself and go, you know what? No. You'll, it kind of puts you You'll in find every flaw you have. Right. <laughs> Right, and that's what I did, and I'm like, I got to really work on my lower body, and I and I really focused on it then. But yeah, you're really not, you're really not all that, you know. It's like unless you get to that level, and then to get to that level, such hard work and diet and everything else, and it's really hard to maintain that um, on a sustained well, it level. Your life. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. People have no idea the dedication it takes to to be in shape like that. Oh no, they don't, and. You know, that's why, you, you know, I will never, which, I mean, I'm heavy right now myself. And, yes, I used to work out all the time, and I used to, I didn't build. I was more into just toning and making myself less uh, untoned, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wasn't in it for the building. But, uh, right. wow, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Isn't that something? Must be the day. Must be something in the water. It's one of those mornings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It don't happen much to me. It just takes a lot of work to do it, and the the yeah, whole stereotypical perception of people that don't do it. It's well, you're full of yourself, and you're stupid, or you're this, or you're that, or you're stuck up, and it's like really, it's kind of quite the contrary. So. Oh, I know where I was going with that. Uh oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> it can actually lead to. Um, to issues like um, bulimia, anorexia, oh, and just yeah. taking it too far. Yeah. You know, a lot of women will actually destroy their insides to to get into that, that bodybuilding shape. Yeah, but see, you said the key word right there, it's shape, because most people make the huge mistake of stepping on a scale. Mm-hmm. And I tell... I don't Huh? Yeah, well, there you go. I don't own one. People like, you know, you know, well, what do you weigh? And I go, I go, well, I'm about 180. I want to get to 190, but I don't really give a flying fuck about the scale. I'm using the mirror. Yeah, I use how my clothes fit. Yeah. How I I feel when I look in the mirror. Right. And that's what I tell these women. And they're like, well, you know, the scale says this. I said, take that scale yeah. and throw it in the fucking garbage. And use your clothes 
And, you know, look in the front, look in the back, and if your thighs are fat or start, if your gravity challenge, fucking whatever, you know, you're going to you're gonna know. But just because, <laughs> yeah, because if you get down to a certain weight, it still doesn't mean you're obtaining the shape that you need to obtain. No. Yeah. No, because muscle is much denser and heavier right. than your fat is. Right. And so you're, you know, that's when people freak out. When they they start working out and they're doing good and they they appear to be losing weight, and then they get on the scale and they put on a couple of pounds. Well, that's because you're building muscle. Yep. Yep. And if and you look, completely freak out and quit. <laughs> well, yeah, and then they'll go to the doctor and their charts. I don't care what anybody says; they're they're way off. I mean, I think for my medium build and my weight was like. 155 to 160 and i'm like you can take that chart if i got down that thin you wouldn't even be able to see me if i stood sideways you know you can take your chart and shove it because because it's wrong yeah my son and i were actually we were talking about uh military and weight yeah and my second husband uh was six foot two weighed like 205 to 210 that's not bad. And the military made him go on a diet. That's ridiculous. The military made him go on a diet. Yeah, no. That's he fine. He had to be 190 to 195 or he was going to get kicked out of the military. For 6'2? For 6'2. No. No. Nope. Ridiculous. My opinion is if you're 200, 6 foot, 200, and then for every inch, 10 pounds, give or take, if you go up or down. So. He should have been yeah. about 220. Oh, no, he was, yeah, he was perfectly healthy yeah. at 210. Right, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I want to get to 190, and then, then I'll be happy. I never weighed that much. 185 is the most I ever weighed, but I, like I said, I use the mirror. Yeah, I so. want to get down to about 135 to 140. There you go. And then I'll be happy again. Yeah, there you go. So... Whatever. It's all, it's all, it's a lifetime, it's a lifestyle. It's a health lifestyle. And whether you do it by yoga, bodybuilding, all the above, boxing, fitness, like I do, you, you got to find what motivates you. But you know what I hear all the time? And I'll get off of this is like, I need a workout partner. That's me. You'll hear that from me all the time. Oh my, I'm like, why? <laughs> because if I have somebody that I'm accountable to, I'm one of those people, I'm very true to my word. And if I make my word to somebody that I'm going to do this, these exercises every day and they come and ask me, I can't lie to them. And then I feel guilty for not doing it hmm. because I didn't keep my word. That's where it comes in for me. Now, it may be something else for others. It may just be an excuse for others. But, um, and, and yes, it's kind of an excuse for me as well because I can do that to myself. But me holding my word to myself is different than me holding my word to somebody else. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a self-motivator, so I, um, I, uh, my workout partner is music. That's how I used to be. Yeah. Yeah. But I have worked out with people, and they, well, I worked out with my wife at the time, and then I got a story to share. When I was living with my my last relationship with my, I guess, roommate, because that's what she said it was. So my roommate that I was going to marry, <laughs> fucking whatever. <laughs> but she um, she wanted to be a secret agent um, undercover wearing all black, like a black leather looking leather tight fitting costume. And she oh, goes. The, the movie version. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and she wanted me to uh, get her in shape. And I said, give me six months, and um, I will. I said, but you're going to have to watch your smoking because it's counterproductive. And she did minimize her smoking because it just doesn't mix. But in any yeah, case, in doesn't. six months, she got in that thing, and she looked phenomenal. And nice. Yeah. So I worked out with my wife at the time years ago, and then I worked out with her, and then I worked out with a guy friend who – who ironically was the smallest out of all of us when we hung out in high school. And, and I've never, huge. <laughs> yes. And I've never seen 
anybody go from that to, I mean, he used to get the hell beat out of him and everything else. And he turned into probably the best wrestler out of all of us and the biggest and strongest. He got up the bench in 360 pounds. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I had trouble just doing the the bar alone, which is, you know, 15, 20 pounds, I forget. But on the inclines, yep. incline benches, mm-hmm. I, that, I struggled with that for so long. Incline? Yeah. Yeah, that's for your upper pecs. And actually, that's what I'm doing now because I know this happens with women, but I'm noticing that my boobs are sagging. <laughs> And I'm not wearing a bra. It, well, maybe for someone special on Saturday night I might. But I have to build up my and round off my pecs because they are, they are falling. They're lo, they're bigger lower yeah. on the bottom. And uh, the only way I can build them up or get them where I want them is uh, doing inclines. So it's kind of funny you yeah, say that. In, so. Inclines are great for, for women to perk up their boobs. Right. And that's what I'm, and that's what I'm doing. But I'm finding out the older I get, I mean, it's really weird. Um, pretty much free weights put a lot of stress on my joints right now, and I feel it. Yeah. So I'm kind of being forced to use in machines, which I don't care if I find the right machine. Um, Some of the machines. I mean, I granted, I have not really been to an actual gym in many years. Mm-hmm. But I remember when they started coming out with all the machines. And and they were weird. I'm I'm a free weight person too. Right. Well, I think they're the best. So, but um. But they do help with the joint issues. Well, I got to be careful with my shoulders laterally because it actually it actually will hurt my shoulder joints from I don't know what probably age. Sorry to say, but. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm wearing out, so I got to be real careful. And I already, I don't know how I did it, but I already tore my bicep off of my arm, and I didn't even know it. And people were like, how did you do that? Ah. And I'm like, I just was trying on clothes one day, and I had my shirt off, and I was really targeting my arms, and they were looking good. And then I'm in this fucking, I'm in this changing room at Buckle, and... I'm looking at my right arm, and I'm like, where's half of my arm? What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, because when you do that, What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> you have a big gap between your shoulder muscle and your deltoid and your, and your bicep. Ooh. I mean, it's connected there, and there's a Ooh, big gap. Wow. Yeah, there's a big gap, and I'm like, so I uh, was working out at my gym at the time, and this guy, the owner of the gym, won Mr. Colorado. So, you know, he's he knows about oh, everything. Wow. And uh, I said, hey, I said, Jay, look at my arm. He goes, oh, oh, you tore your bicep off your arm. I did the same shit. But he's so fucking huge and whatever. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, okay. But but when he pointed it out, I saw it. And he goes, well, yeah, I, I couldn't compete anymore because the judges would ding me for this gap right here. But he goes, you can build up your 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 bicep that you got and fill that in i'm like because he goes you can get surgery but it's going to be 15 to 20 grand and a lot of doctors won't do it anymore according to him because it won't take and i'm like i'm not dropping 15 20 grand on a surgery that might not work so i got to build that up but yeah it's it's horrible fucking sucks yeah a friend of mine on uh facebook that i i used to do work for his website um, he actually, he just did that recently, ripped his bicep off. Yeah, but when it happens, you're usually doing something to cause it. Like when Jay did it, he was doing preacher curls, and I guess the whole gym heard it because it was just like a snap, and then your muscle, yeah. well, if it pulls off the shoulder, it balls up on the bottom, and then if it pulls off your, your uh, forearm, it, it, and it pulls off the tendons of e- on either end, and it balls up. And mine pulled off my shoulder, and it balled up down on the bottom now and it's not as prevalent because it's been a year now it's not as prevalent as when it first happens but i've been building up my arm so it's probably a trophy from it balling up and then i'm building up 
I think it's my bicep minor, not bicep major, which is the one that is laying underneath your bicep muscle. And you can build it up. But I looked into this yesterday on the Internet, so it's got to be true. But I've been riding motocross since I was a kid, and I want to get back into it. But I'm worried about not having that bicep muscle for strength if I do go motocross riding. Ooh. Yeah, and some people um, said, yeah, I had that happen, and I got it fixed, and everything's fine. And there was one or two guys that said, well, I had it happen, and I didn't do shit. Because they're all worried if they crash, they can't pick up their bike. And it's, well, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, well, they don't know how to pick up a bike because I, I, I dumped my 650-pound Kawasaki 1400 um, accidentally and just when I got it, and it fell. And... There's a way to pick up a bike. I don't care how strong or small you are. And I picked it up like it was nothing. But if you try to use your brute strength and your upper strength, you're you're not going to pick it up. Any 100-pound chick can pick up a fucking 650, 750-pound Harley with no problem at all. Well, yeah, I mean, it's all about leverage. Exactly. You use your butt and you push into the bike and you yeah. grab the handlebar and you grab the side and you... You push it right up like you're walking into it, and the thing comes right up. And I've never had to do that in my life because a retired trooper friend told me how to do it because he was a bike cop for years. And I'm like, well, I'll never have to worry about that because I won't drop my bike because I'm that stupid. Well, I did <laughs> drop my bike, and I was stupid. And I'm like, uh-oh. And I tried it, and the thing came right up. But one guy one guy said, yeah, I went to the dock, and he said, you really don't have to get it fixed. You, don't, you will only lose 5% of your strength in your arm. And for me, I will definitely disagree with that. I have noticed a significant difference in strength in my arm. Especially in movements where you're lifting it and you bring it almost all the way up to your shoulder, like if you're doing dumbbell curls. it yeah. And it gets fatigued a lot quicker. And if you try to press something over your head, like military presses or lift something, it definitely reduces my strength in that area too so just to say that oh don't worry about it you build it up and you'll and you'll only lose five percent of your strength is bullshit <laughs> i'm just telling you right now um <laughs> it, it, it's not true but it's to the point now where unless i point it out people don't notice it but when you first look at it you're like oh my god i'm falling apart what the fuck is wrong with me i mean <laughs> could you be imagine being a woman and you lost half the half of your right butt cheek or whatever and you're like what the fuck you know i i would be really happy with that actually oh but well I mean, okay well yeah, both, yeah. but well. you know <laughs> well, you got some fluffiness to lose that muscle if you tore your, i'm saying if you know, yeah. I, I know you're joking but i mean if you tore half your you're working on your butt and it looks great and you wake up one morning or you're tr- trying clothes on you lose half your butt you'd be like what the fuck what's hang, that hang on just a second. you playing games hang on no, my son is calling me. Uh-oh. Got to take that one. Oh, and he hung up. Okay. Fuck you, man. You didn't answer the phone. Okay. <laughs> well, I can hear his truck outside, so I know he hasn't left. <laughs> well, he's either going to walk in or call you, so let's see which one he does. <laughs> I've had kids. I raised two. Oh, yeah. He's he's 21. He's, he's no longer a kid anymore. Yeah, I think <laughs> unless you're 30, I still think you're a kid, but I, you know, I get your point, whatever. Uh, let's see. Legally, he's not 18. You should have kicked him out. Well, I actually, um, <laughs> I moved back in with him. Oh. Um, back about two, three years ago now. I see. Yeah. Yeah, no, my my daughter and her boyfriend at the time had the opportunity to get a place, as a matter of fact, up in Loveland. And, uh, oh, no. Longmont. Longmont. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they had an opportunity to get a place, and Stephen was living with them, sharing the place. Mm Mm-hmm. So I moved back in with them, with him so that they didn't have to break their lease. Oh, okay. And it's just worked out well since, so. Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, my son and I are roommates. We're not we're not mother and son. We're we're roommates. Hmm. And it's working out. Very well, actually. That's good. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, he works a lot, so he's not really home a whole lot. No, that could that could be a good thing. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a good thing anyway. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, in more ways than one. Uh, well, the harder you work, the luckier you get, and I can definitely agree with that. So, yeah. all right, so I will share my movie. We got fifteen minutes. Holy shit! My movie. Yeah, What's that? Your movies. Yeah, my movies. Oh, by the way, I have to start at six a.m. tomorrow morning. So, if you want to come on and do the show yeah. or fucking whatever, I don't really care. But I got a job I got to do. So, no worries. Work is going to get in the way we, sometimes. We work around life here. <laughs> right. Sometimes, not a lot. But recently, with the meeting last week, and then now i got to show up at 6 a.m. on a job because it's in a kitchen in the ceiling, and i got to do it when they're not cooking, and I only can do that at 6 a.m., but whatever. So that's why i got to do it. And if you if you want to uh, hop on like later in the day, we can always do that if we've got an open spot. Yeah, I'll make yeah, I'll make up for it. That's a good idea because I've done that in the past. So, uh, all right. Yeah, so, go ahead. Yeah, let me know. I will. Uh, okay. So I love going to the movies, and I saw with my friends Bad Boys for Life. Did you see it? Yes. Is it good? It is awesome. I'm awesome. so dying to see that one. <laughs> yeah, it it the, I'll be perfectly honest without spoilers. The first five, ten minutes, it's like, yeah. Martin Lawrence has gotten a little fluffy. I'll give him that. So that was kind of like. Yes, he has. Yeah, and I'm like, right, because right in his face, you know, and I'm like, one too many biscuits there, you know, he's too many, <laughs> too much. But uh, Will Smith looked great. Um. It, does. Yeah, it, it it's it's um it's as good as any of the other ones. I mean, in my opinion, Bad Boys Two is the best out of all of them, which was there was only two, but the second one was better. But this one definitely um it's it's kind of like the second one. It's got the drug cartel in it and blah 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 blah. Uh, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but it is def. There is so many classic one liners in there. And the people that Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are working with, they're the younger generations calling them grandpa and and they're just busting their balls on their age. And of course they give it right back. And uh Martin Lawrence just really gives Will Smith a hard time through the whole movie. It's so fucking funny. Cool. <laughs> because in the beginning I'm like, eh, you know, I'm not feeling it. I'm not seeing the chemistry. And it's like, as time goes on and within a half an hour at the most, it's like you're right back in it. And it's like, oh my God, Yay. this is funnier cool. than fuck. Yeah. It's, I can't wait to see that one. I was cracking up more than once. It was really, and it's really witty and quick. You got to pay attention. It, it's like, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Very, very good. Highly recommend it. I'd see it again. Um, just as good as Bad Boys 2, if not better. Um, but if not better, it's just as good. So, cool. Definitely worth the money to go see it. You will have a good time. <laughs> so, if you're a fan, which I would assume you wouldn't go see well, it if yeah. you're not. So, but uh, yeah, very good. So, the second movie I saw was Doctor Doolittle. How was it? Okay, so. I really like Robert Downey Jr. and I and I don't give opinions based on because I like somebody or dislike him. Right. Like Matt right. Damon. I don't like it's, him. It's the role itself. Right. I don't like Matt Damon. I don't like his political views. I don't like really anything that comes out of his mouth except when he's acting. And um the movie that he did, the Mars movie, The Martian. That's one of my favorite yeah. freaking movies of all time. That is such a great... If you don't think you can get out of something legally or with your mind or figure something out, then watch The Martian because I think it's a great entrepreneurial movie, believe it or not. Because 
an entrepreneur figures a way out of something or, or fix it, not out to avoid yeah. it, but figures it out. You know what I mean? For, for they figure out a result, for exactly a solution, right? That movie is just freaking unbelievable. I think every bit of business management class should show that movie. I'm going to have to watch it again, and, and it's been a while since I watched it. Well, if you look at it and from that— I don't that, know that I ever watched the whole thing. If you look so. at it from that perspective, it's—I mean, he does fall back on a science knowledge and, and education of being a botanist, but regardless of, of that, there's some things that he does figure out that he doesn't fall back on that, and it's like, oh, my God, this guy's fucked. He's going to starve to death. He's alone on Mars, blah, 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 blah. He's going to run out of air, it, and he figures all of it out. And when you're an entrepreneur and you're blazing your own trail, you run into situations like that that apparently yeah. doesn't seem to be an answer. So if you look at it from an entrepreneurial perspective, it's like, oh, my God, you feel like you can do anything after you after you see this movie. So well, I, I probably should watch it again. Oh, yeah, watch it and have that perspective because it's some, very. Yeah, give me some. Oomph. Yeah, it'll give you some motivation. It, de it definitely should. Uh, and then I loved Ford versus Ferrari with him in that movie. That's a great movie. That was a good one. Yeah, that, that was I was good. like, I don't really care what he thinks off screen or whatever or whatever La La Land he lives in. This is a good fucking movie. So I, the point of all that is, is it goes both ways. If I don't like somebody and whatever, it doesn't affect my opinion of the film. Uh, yeah. And when I really do like somebody, it really doesn't affect my opinion of the film. So. With all that said, I went and saw it, and I saw mixed reviews from horrible to a really good movie. This is what I'm going to say. First of all, I was late because I was writing my book, and I got in a few minutes late, but I don't think I missed anything. Um, then I left because I wanted to watch the championship football game. Yeah, so I kind of like, but, but what I did see, and I probably left a half hour early before it was over and I, I left in the dragon scene so that's not giving anything away there's just a dragon which I thought was kind of cool actually <laughs> but I left then and um, so I don't know how much more I missed but I'm going to say this this movie is for kids really period yeah yeah it's and it's a very fast moving always something going on it's not boring or mundane by any stretch of the imagination, the animals and the interaction and everything is, is just phenomenal. It's not your, it's not your, even the first Dr. Doolittle movie or the one with Eddie Murphy. It's not nothing like those. Have you seen the complaints about people who have never seen, and I'm assuming it's people who have never seen the original. Um, people are complaining that, because Robert Downey Jr. is white, and it's like, I'm sorry, but the original Dr. Doolittle was white. Right, from the late well, 60s. And or why early, did Dr. Yeah. Doolittle's race even matter? He talks to freaking animals, people. <laughs> you know, if you really want to go on. that far into that ridiculous type of thinking, then why are all the animals different colors? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. Really? It's, I couldn't believe it when I started seeing that because, I mean, the first thing that popped in my head was the original Dr. Doolittle. Yeah, which I don't know who, who started in that. It was from the, what, early 70s or somewhere around there, wasn't it? I don't remember. I'm going to look it up. But... Yeah, go ahead because it would be great. But, yeah, I do. I am old enough to remember the first one, but I can't remember yeah. who was in it. It might have been the late 60s or early 70s because I looked it up, too. Because Robert Downey Jr. does this accent, and it's supposed to be uh, British or English or whatever, but it's... It, yeah, it's supposed to be English. Yeah, it's really not, though. It's more Irish, if anything. But And he drops his, he drops his voice at least an octave. So, oh, wow. Yeah, he's not... But he doesn't want to be Tony Stark, you know, so he doesn't use his normal voice. He, dro he drops it, and he has this accent. It's more... More Gaelic or Irish. It's not really English, but that's just my opinion. So, Okay, so the original Dr. Doolittle came out in 1967. Oh, geez, that was three. Okay. And it was starring Rex Harrison. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's thinking Eddie Murphy, and he should be yeah, black. No, and, I, I remember that movie when I was a kid. That was like one of my favorite movies. Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I'm going to hit. the animals. You know what? I it was my dream. I might <laughs> watch that one again because it'll bring back um, memories because then I'll remember right? seeing it. Yeah, but I was three, so I don't know. I don't think I saw it then. Oh, well, I wasn't quite on the choke yet, so I definitely didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it when I was a kid, though. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know that. There was an original yeah. Dr. Doolittle movie. Yeah, and the books came out apparently in the 1920s. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why everybody has to throw race in wow. and, and fucking things. They That's fuck 100 years me ago. Off. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Time's flying. Wow. Sorry, that was just like one of those little connection things. Right. Holy cow, it's been 100 years since those books came out. You know, this is ridiculous, and I'm going to hear about this one. But you remember the TV show Roots, right? Roots, Roots, whatever you want to call it. Remember that? Oh, of course. Why don't we yeah, just I re- store... I remember watching that with my great-grandma. Yeah, why don't we just redo that and put all white people in it? <laughs> I mean, come on. That would be that would be rather interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, it's obvious that if it... And slavery is a horrible thing all around the planet in the history of, of our of our planet, not just here or whatever. And it still happens in other countries. Yeah. But regardless of that, there are some things that are historical in your culture and should not be changed. And there are some movies exactly. that should not be remade. Like if they ever remake Gone with the Wind, I'm never going to see another movie as long as I live. I mean, leave, oh, that would be, it'd be that horrible. Would be a, yeah, that's not OK. Leave it alone. Leave some things alone. But all the uproar about the the cartoons and you know going to live action and and them changing the race of a mermaid. Oh, uh, you know. I mean, come on, people. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, a mermaid. It's just, <laughs> you know, or the you know what I'm going to say this in defense of people's perception that they're not showing America. You know, Spike Lee said that. It's like, oh, you're not showing black people and Chinese people from whatever, you know, in roles. All you have to do is go back to the little rascals. All right. Right? I love the little rascals. Yeah, you had every, and I don't think it was intended. I, I don't. I don't think they were thinking, well, we got to represent every demographic of, of America here. No, so we they need were to... looking at a normal group of kids. Right. Right. Kids don't think about race and no, nope, they don't see in color and nope. all that kind of stuff. They just want to know if you want to play the same game. Yeah, you know why? Because they weren't taught racism, and racism is taught. So they weren't even looking at it like, you know, well, you're black and you're this and you're that, and I don't want to hang with you. They had nothing to do with it. Uh-uh. You had a girl in there, Darla, and you had uh, buckwheat, and you had alfalfa, <laughs> and you had Spanky, and you had the fucking dog. I mean, I mean, and I don't think anybody was looking at it like, well, where's the Chinese person? Where's the Asian person? No. You know, where's the Mediterranean person? No, it's where, a bunch of kids acting Exactly. Goofy. And it's a fucking TV show, man. Right? <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> yeah, it's got to stop. You know, it's got, uh, you have the black entertainment channel, and it's like, okay, where's the white entertainment channel? It's only fair. Where's the Asian Entertainment Channel? Where? Why does it all got to be segregated? I don't. I don't. Because that's what I. I don't. I don't have that mentality, so I don't get it. Right. I never will. Right. And white people shouldn't rap because that's black people's artists. I mean, I'll give them rhythm and blues, but there's some great white people that do great with rhythm and blues stuff. You know. So why does it all got to be? Uh, what? Stevie Ray Vaughan. I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Hello. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> But R and B really is a, is a black African American thing. I mean, in maybe even disco. I don't know. Although John Travolta yeah. is fucking amazing, but uh, but why do we gotta go there? What's the fucking point? Well, I don't I don't get it. I, I, I don't either. I don't. The more it's kind of one of those things where you know I have on one side, it's like okay, the less attention we give to the issues. Maybe they'll just go away, you know, quit making it an issue. 
But then at the same time, I also understand certain groups that are standing up for themselves because they have been truly oppressed over the years. There's no doubt about that. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's, but when it comes to our, our movies and our entertainment, I'm not real big on that whole industry anyway. I don't think that they should be Mm. making the millions that they make. They're getting up and they're getting in front of a camera and they're acting. Big deal. What what service does that provide for the community other than entertainment? I have no idea. Why are they making more than our teachers? I have no idea. Who actually make a difference? I have, you know, yeah, I, I, have. I have a big issue with the entertainment industry. Well, they better get <laughs> they better get their act straight because if they keep doing what they're doing and keep pointing out the inequalities and in social justice, but in order to get a role and make it in the industry, you got to fuck somebody to do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, really? So you're, you're, you're concerned about racism and inequality and social justice, but I'm going to have to give you a blow job or get you, or you're going to have sex with me so I can get the role. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a predatory industry just at its core. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bring in the pedophile part of it. I mean, it's, they, they think it's their own little world. And they want to be this shining example of um, being the best person they can. And uh, there's so many demons and such an inner inner culture in there that they don't think people know. And it's coming out. And it's going to destroy them. Yeah, it, it definitely is. I, I, I don't know. I Like I said, I have huge issues with the, the whole entertainment industry. I do, too. To begin with. I do too. Don't don't tell me how to live my life and how to think of something when for a living all you do is play dress up and pr- pretend you're somebody that you're not and you get paid millions of dollars. Sorry. Yeah, I just don't get it. Same with professional sports. Do you know, that too. I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't never g- will. I don't get that part. <laughs> I don't get that part either. So, if you if you want to create jobs and make this place a better world then i'll have more respect for you and what you say but uh if you haven't done that and made other people's lives better by your actions then uh yeah being a movie star use that fame and fortune to actually do something for your community exactly and some of the nfl players are because i got all pissed off with that oh yeah and what kaepernick was doing and stuff it's like why don't you go to these inner city places with these fucking kids and they're actually showing that because i've been watching the nfl games and there's actually players that are doing that so cool. yeah so i mean they always have i i will give them that that they there's always been a core of of athletes who actually do go into their communities mm-hmm. and they do things for their communities. Yep. But as a whole on the industry is what I'm talking about. Right. But the spotlights never shined on what the good they're doing and they're doing that. No. So that's what they need to do. Yay. Yeah. I'm glad. It's very nice to see. Uh, Cause you could tell these kids are fucked up and they just got this gang mentality in there and they know they're not going anywhere because that's what they keep telling themselves. So, well, and that's what they keep getting told by society and their That's community. true. That's very true. Uh, but back to Dr. Doolittle. So, the, the, so this movie yeah. is a kid's movie. So if you go as an adult, you're probably not going to like it. Oh, whatever. You're not. <laughs> you're not. But what this film is going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be a sleeper. People are going to put it down. Because how many kids give their reviews? Everything's on the Internet's the fucking parents you know so yeah it robert downey jr did a great job it really shows his acting ability which is amazing and you're convinced that it is what it is very fast moving but i think it's gonna be beaten down and then it might even be a sleeper but i think eventually as time goes by with dvd or downloads after it comes out on that it's going to be a classic. This movie is going to be a classic. I'm going to have to watch it. I mean, I'm already planning to when I can. Yeah. But he... Because, I mean, I just... I love Dr. Doolittle, so... He, he is... <laughs> people don't understand, though, in the very beginning, he is depressed, and he's isolated, and he just gave up on people because he lost his wife, 
in his friends or animals. So he pretty much secludes himself and locks himself up in his fucking house. So you got you got to have that. But then he's pulled out of his house, and I don't want to give any more away than that. Yeah. And and you have to keep that into perspective. So he's an in, depressed intro, introvert. I mean, doesn't like people anymore. <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> You know, right there, no it's kind of no wonder I like Doctor Doolittle so much. Well, that's that's the character <laughs> that he's playing in this movie. I got to see the original one. I really do. I want to see it. Yeah, I need to watch it again now that I now that we've been talking about it. I'm going to have to watch the original. Yeah, but I really truly believe that it's going to be um, like a Disney classic, but it's going to take time. P- people are really going to miss the boat on this movie. Because if you're a kid, I don't see how you can't. If you're a kid and you like animals, which which kid don't, you're going to really like this movie. But it's not for adults. Just like adult movies aren't for kids. This is not a fucking adult movie. No, see, I, I like my kids' movies. I, I, there you go. I love my kids' movies and my cartoons. And... <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not going to see Iron Man and Tony Stark as Dr. Doolittle. And that's Tony Stark stereotyped himself, or Robert Downey Jr. did, because he played Tony Stark for so long. So that's what people think they're going to see, and it's not even anything of the kind. That's not even a relatable character to Dr. Doolittle. Right, right. A complete different world. Well, I think everybody's busting his balls because he quit doing the role, and he's like, I'm tired of doing it, and I don't blame him. He's playing the same fucking thing for 10 years in the movies. It's like, I want... to to move on out of this yeah you know and it's i mean like arnold couldn't play the terminator every fucking movie you know i mean come on give me a break (laughs) nobody can do the same role so which i am kind of wondering if if they're going to do anything else with the with the whole series with um, marvel of movies with marvel i'm hoping that yeah, I'm hoping that they'll actually like expand on um, on the Guardians of the Galaxy. I really love the Guardians. Well, I saw a trailer for Black Widow, so that's coming out. So they're focusing on each I'm character. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that looks really good, actually. She's badass. She's fucking normal. She's yeah. amazing. So that's coming out. So they might start focusing on, you know, like what Star Wars is doing, start focusing on separate characters and how they became who they are. So they they got they got at least ten years of doing that shit. So which they better stick to the freaking stories. Those are old comic books. Yeah, that I don't. They know. need to yeah. stick to the storylines. Oh yeah, believe me, people are watching. They're. Oh yeah, they are. That's where Thanos came from, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He came from the comic book, didn't he? All of them did. Okay, well I know, but I mean, when there's new characters and stuff brought on with new ideas and new plots, I mean they're they're sticking oh. to the comic book is what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they're just. It's, not... it's a challenge, but if you watch them in actual chronological order, not like when they came out, but the actual chronological order of them. Yep. It's actually pretty fascinating to to watch all the development and. And have it get to that end point. See, I'm scared to do that because I got addictive behavior as it is. So if I start going down that road, I mean, Star Wars is enough for me. And I'm not even a quote unquote huge star, star not in comparison to other people, a huge Star Wars fan. But Yeah. Well, um, and I mean, there's like 20 movies for, for uh, Marvel. Oh, is there? Yeah. Yeah. It took us quite a while. It took us a few days to get through it all, and that was watching it, like, constantly. Yeah, I I think Stan Lee was amazing. It's about, I mean, I've always liked Spider-Man. I mean, uh, oh, and I know it's DC, but they're coming out with 1984 Wonder Woman. I saw the trailer for that. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a basic trailer, but very just because it's not coming out till June, I guess. So. Okay. But that looked good. I can't keep track of when they all come out. I always forget. June. That one's coming out in June. So, but that looked pretty good. Definitely 80s-ish because it's 80, 1984 or something like that. So it's, you can tell. That should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Some, some of the, the big hair. Some of the 80s stuff was great, but some of it was just really embarrassing. <laughs> big hair. <laughs> I wonder if everybody's doing cocaine. 
Hey, Wonder Woman, <laughs> here, try it. That's how they got their superpowers, Here's all a, those 80s drugs. <laughs> right. Here's a line of Coke for you. You got a credit card so we can cut it up? Okay, well, I fucking, how about a mirror? Just try Here, it. Here's mirror. your metal straw. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll tie you up with that lasso. You know what Coke does to you? I'll just be perfectly honest. I did it. I only snorted it, but it, it really makes you think more. It's crazy. But I, I had my days of experimentation. Right. Yeah, so did I. In the early 90s. So did I. <laughs> yeah, I had it in the 80s. And, and yeah, it's just yeah, I didn't, crazy Yeah, I did not really care for for it um yeah it's but i also i've never never been one because i have enough trouble maintaining my brain as it is in reality yep and drugs just didn't really do much for me i mean they were fun yeah good they they definitely had their fun experiences but alcohol and drugs just never never did anything for me. Yeah, I see, didn't like the, the feeling of being out of control. No, I didn't either. Al- alcohol was like my drug of choice, but the, the cocaine really didn't last long with me. All my friends were doing it, and I'm not blaming them, but it's just like they're around doing it, so you do it, and it's like, yeah. But uh, yeah. that's synonymous with I the would... 80s. That's why I brought that up. So. <laughs> It should be good though. Yeah. I'd like to see the perspective. What forty years later, thereabouts. Well, yeah, just pretty much. Nineteen eighty, yeah. twenty twenties, forty years, thirty something years, and see how it comes out on the big screen like that. Because it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, um, another movie that I mean, granted, it's probably more of a chick flick, but um, I actually I got to see Like a Boss. Well, I heard it was bad. And it is really good. It's and good. It totally, oh, okay. totally reminded me of Scarlet and me. Huh. <laughs> yep. So that's the yeah. chick from Girls Trip or something, right? And is Queen Latifah in that too? Who's in that? No, 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 no. Um, it is about two women who have a makeup line. And they go through the whole thing of getting an investor, finding out that the investor, yeah, I, I can't, I don't want to give spoilers. Okay. But they, they go through the whole investors and starting their own business. And of course they have the big fight, you know, um, the, you know, it's, I mean, it's a standard plot, but, um, but the way that they interact was so amazing. <laughs> And like I said, it just it totally reminded me of Scarlet and me. So it so it's a good movie. What's it called? Like a boss. Like a boss. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, it's a good one. If you say it's good, like I'll I go. Like I said, t- it may be more of a chick flick for you, but yeah, well. yeah, look at it from the entrepreneurial, and think about Scarlet and me as as those two characters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't I don't mind chick flicks if they're not too gooey or whatever oh no no No. and it's got uh selma hayek in it oh i love selma hayek i think that's her name i think that's her name selma hayek okay i like her i get her and somebody else confused sometimes but i'm pretty sure it's selma hayek okay i will uh go check it out so on your recommendation see what it see what it's like and it's an entrepreneurial show, so you should enjoy that aspect of it. Well, I'm all for that. Anything with business is, uh, I'm always interested in watching that. Ding. I'm getting hooked on Instagram <laughs> since I freaking canceled my Facebook account. <laughs> Cancel one, they all move over to another to get you. Well, you know what I like? And, it, and I'm sure it's the people I'm following or not following or whatever, but it... The, the political stuff doesn't come up. The whole just negative, the, the whole negative crap is not on here. So I like it a lot. Really? Yeah, I don't see it. I've never been able to get into Instagram. I do it for work, but not for anything else. <laughs> yeah, I of course, like that's it. the only reason I'm on Facebook too. So <laughs> yeah, right. No, it just just Facebook jumped the shark for me. It's just too much fucking negative shit going on. I don't see it anymore. So yeah, I like this though. So. And then anything. Did you know that today would have been Janis Joplin's birthday? No, I love Janis Joplin. She would have been seventy-seven today. 
She's such great projection in her voice. So great. Oh, she was amazing. Yep. Hmm. There's a commercial that's go that's out right now that always gets her her song stuck in my head. Which one? Uh, it's I think it's for some cruise or something. Oh, okay. But it's her Alice in Wonderland song. I can't remember the name of it offhand. I I love Take Another Piece of My Heart. That's a great fucking song. Oh, she's got lots of them. I know she does, but I like that she one a lot. And Bobby McGee's all right or whatever, but Freedom, Freedom's good. I like that song. Anyway. <laughs> all right, yeah, there won't be another one like her for sure. I don't think. Not with that projection. Or that personality. Right, yeah, all of it. Yeah, she was just really. We, we've had some incredible artists back from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. I don't know. Although Pat Benatar's got one hell of a voice. So does Nancy Wilson. But it's not the same genre, you know. She didn't do rock. What would you call her? Blues? Folk? I don't. I honestly, I, when you look at some of that older music, it fits into various genres right. that we have now. Right. Whereas back then we didn't have as many real genres. Right. Look at that. People are in Ron's chat room. Come over here, you oh, guys. Yeah. The fuck? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised uh, no. Sam Best's not on yet. No, good for He's him. usually up with us. Good for him. It takes a lot of hard work to get to get fans like that. So he, you know, he obviously earned it. So. Oh, he's he's got like five thousand followers on YouTube. No oh, shit. And he's trying to get off of YouTube. Uh huh. And so many of them are throwing. He said, "Oh my goodness." Huh. Okay. Well. But yeah, we've uh, we've had. Uh, Right around a hundred or more in chat for all of his shows that are on the site. Yeah, well, We've that's been awesome. Right around a hundred chatters. That's awesome. Well, hopefully it keeps building up. So I don't know. Uh, I sent you my money, by the way. <laughs> so I paid my thing. Oh, I so, saw that. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, I I lost it, and I'm like, because I told you I'd pay it Saturday, and I'm like, where the fuck did that go? And then I searched my email, and I found it. So. Oh no worries. Yeah, no, I get it. You know where to find me. We know where to find you, and the bills aren't due yet, so we weren't too stressed. <laughs> yeah, no, I just get paid on Friday, and unfortunately, like everybody else, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, so it's like uh, I'll pay it when I get paid. So. Yep. So I did. Yeah, we're, we're pretty easy with working with people. Hmm. With our hosts. Cool. Because we watch on the air, so... Well, I want to be here because it's fun, and I'll do it until, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. But uh, And life happens. <laughs> weird things happen. I still can't. I, I talked about this before. I just can't imagine doing this for somebody. I just, I mean, I don't mind doing it here and, and wherever, but I just get, like, some big radio place or something i just i i i can't i can't wrap my head around that because they would take it and then they would manage me and they would go well you need to do this and you need to do that and you can't do this anymore and you can't do that and obviously you can't swear which i i wouldn't have a problem with but i just don't like not being able to do it's like taking a comic that's just doing open mic and telling them what to say or not say you can't do that no, no, and that's part of the whole purpose is, you know, Freedom Rev is, is here to let people have their say, no matter what their say is, you know, as long as they're not being hateful, you know, or violent, then they should have a voice. Right, and I don't want a structure. I mean, it's like if you and I, yeah. before we came on here, and a program director or whatever is like, okay, here's the outline. This is what you're going to talk about, and every 20 minutes we're going to have commercials and music and all this fucking crap. Look, look at what we've talked about, which wasn't even unplanned or anything or premeditated <laughs> or structured or whatever the word is, 
in an hour in almost a half now. Look at all the things we talked about. Yeah. We have a great time, and it's it's more natural flow. But that's the way it's supposed to be, in my opinion. Me too. You know, I mean, no offense, but even Howard Stern has a structure, and by no means in any way, shape, or form is this that. I'm not saying that. No. I'm just saying, because he has writers, and he even admits it. I have writers, and I do this, and I do that, and I, mm-hmm. I'm not steering this anywhere. <laughs> this is just coming <laughs> out, and, and in quite all honesty, this is how Chicago radio was for years. You know, they have their sti- well, sticks. that's how all the old morning shows used to be. I they know. They just whatever happened to come up. I know, and it's dead, and it pisses me off. It's like, just let these fucking people talk about what they want to talk. <gasps> well, we, yeah, well, we can't say that. We might offend them. Fuck them. You know, like we, talk, <laughs> like we talked about the transgender thing again. You know, if you're going to focus on one specific thing, like I said, that's a mental problem. They got fucking issues. Well, yeah. but if you really, if you really want to get past that and really get into it and know what I really think, let's go there. And we did see right. th- that. That's the thing. I mean, whatever we hit on, whether it's sarcasm or this or that, and then we start really getting into it. It's like, okay, you want to get serious about this? Here's what I really think. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. And I think it, it's, it gives it gives us the opportunity to really talk about some of those touchy topics. Right. And it's not like you and I agree on everything. No. That, that's for, that's like probably furthest from the truth. Hey, but... watch it. <laughs> <laughs> You're offending me. You don't agree with me. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> Whatever. Wow. But it's the ability to have those conversations wow. at a deeper level. Well, how boring would it be if, oh, yeah, Tim, I agree with you. Or, yeah, I agree with you, Melissa, and everything's just fucking wonderful. And flowers and lollipops and let's go skipping in our dresses through the field because I'm a transgender. Really? Welcome to Dream World. Yeah. Yeah, that's La La Land. That's like, oh, everybody's happy all the time and blah, 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 blah. And it's a mental frame of mind. I mean, whatever. You know, th- this is life. And, and and it gives plenty of material <laughs> because everybody, right. keep, everybody keeps um, expressing their hate and thinking from their emotions, um, which I don't have a problem with in the beginning. But if you really just can calm down and look at it, and, and try to figure out why it really is, then uh, it, it goes to a different level. And that's, but in order to do that, you have to have an open mind and think, okay, well, maybe, maybe there's more to this. And there is. You just have to figure out how to get to the deeper levels of it. And that's what this show's about. Exactly. Whether that and makes sense awesome. or not. Huh? It's awesome. And eventually we'll talk about hemp and CBD. <laughs> well, hopefully by the end of 2020, but yeah, that would be nice. So we might get there. Well, what we're gonna have to do is come right out of the box with it, so maybe we can do that. But like I said, I like killing a half an hour just by bullshit. Well, the whole show's bullshitting, but I, I, for the first half an hour, I like bullshitting personal what I did and blah 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 because it, uh, I don't know, it just kills time <laughs> actually. But uh, well, and it. It also it's it's it is a way of saying you know hey you know we're we're normal people too right and these are the things that we do yeah and they can relate you can these resonate we think about. you can resonate with people it's like oh really this yeah. guy goes to the show and he liked Doctor Doolittle and in Bad Boys Three it's like well yeah of course I mean I'm no better than you I just sit in front of this fucking microphone and you don't. So that's really the only difference. <laughs> so Exactly. Yeah. We all still live our lives every day. Yeah. So the only difference is Some I, are more exciting than others. <laughs> true. <laughs> the only difference is I do it and you can too. So do it. <laughs> you know, it's like there's plenty of slots, right, Melissa? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah we we've, we've got lots of open slots, lots of good times. Right. And all they need to do is go to the website, freedomrevolutionnetwork.com, and 
go to SRN Radio, and there is a host your own show link, and they can submit their ideas, and we can talk to them about it. And it can be pretty much whatever. I mean, this isn't uh, this isn't yeah. a, a liberal CNN freaking news whatever platform, and it's not Fox Fox or Fox Business uh, conservative ultra right either. I mean, this is fucking whatever, yeah. right? It's whatever. Yeah, and yeah. we welcome people from all walks of life and all kinds of topics because you never know what people are going to be into. In. You know, right. you may think that your show is like totally, you know, very, very small niche, but then whenever you start doing your show, you find out, oh, wow, there's a hundred people in my chat room because they want to hear what I have to say. Right. Or they want to get in there and just bounce things off of other people. And that's yeah. what I did when I, when I was in the chat room years ago. So yeah, it's all fun. Actually, it is what it is. So, I had a great yeah. time doing it. So and yeah, it, it's an awesome experience, and it's it's really cool when you you start connecting with all those people that you never knew before. Yeah, well, I tell people, you know, if you're really passionate about what you believe or whatever, and then you got to get past the. You got to get past the mental frame of, well, I'm going to convince all these people that Trump's, Trump sucks or Obama sucks or fucking everything. You, know, you, you, you can't. You, that's not what it's about. But you can come on and share your perspective and then maybe your perspective will change like mine has a million times because you're bouncing things off of other people. It's like an open discussion thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. that's what makes it so awesome. It's right. just that whole ability to, and that's, again, one of the, the missions is just getting people to connect on a human level. All right. Well, we'll all get there. We got to, you know, I hate saying it, but some common ground thing, and we can agree to disagree, like you said. I mean, we we yeah. don't agree, but it it's not about agreeing. It's about discussing and going like, hmm, you know what? I never really thought about about it that way. Like the whole transgender thing again, you know, it's like that because yeah. you you made me come back a little bit to center after you said, well, I know a lot of people and they're really good people and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, yeah, they're fucked up people and need to get to the goddamn psychiatrist. But I, I, I read all about this stuff and the whole reincarnation thing. And then when we discussed and it brought me back to that. So you pulled me more towards yeah. you thinking like, wow, you know, maybe these people really don't have a fucking choice. No. Well, like my roommate, my old roommate, um, she is she does collections for medical. And the doctors that she works for are the ones that treat children who have I think it's en endocrinology. Yeah, I know what you're I talking about. I can't remember about. what the what the right term is. Yeah. I know it starts with an E. Yeah, I know what you're talking <laughs> about. But it's kids that were born with issues yep and it's not parents trying to change their kids it's parents trying to make their kids healthy yep and sometimes that does require various hormones and um operations you know i i actually dated a guy who was a hermaphrodite really yeah wow yeah and it's, uh, it, it, they're still normal people, you know? Well, yeah, they're human beings. It's, you know, they can't really change that, so. Yeah. But there are definitely, there's definitely issues that some are born with. And, you know, going back to that whole reincarnation thing, that, that, because I'm a believer in reincarnation, that hit home with me. Right. Totally. And I think it would with, mo with most reasonable, open-minded people. What, how yeah. couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, every lifetime we have a lesson to learn or multiple lessons. Yep. Yeah, but if you keep coming back as the same sex forever and then the next time you're the different sex, and then, gee, you wonder <laughs> why, you know, you're attracted yeah. to the same sex. It's like, well, it's because you were the other sex for who knows. I mean, it, it, yeah. It and when I read that, I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that makes, that makes sense. so much sense <laughs> and and is logical and explains 
why people are the way they are, whether they're talented or their sexuality or whatever. It just makes perfect sense. So Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And one of the theories of reincarnation is that, you know, you do carry with you through each lifetime memories of your past lifetimes. Well, yeah, that's how you learn. So, yeah, but yeah. you got all that other crap, too, being a human being. So that that carries with you as well. So, yeah. Have you ever done have you? I'm, I'm assuming you haven't. But um, have you ever looked into uh, past life regressions? What through hypnosis and stuff, or mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a guy. It's it. I the ones that I've done weren't hypnosis. Uh -huh. It was more like a meditation. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's a. It's more like when you have somebody who's helping you with it. It's more like a guided med meditation. Yeah, I um. I'm just trying to figure out my fucking life right now, but I mean, I, I, I <laughs> let alone the last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let alone, yeah, the, all that stuff. But I, I wouldn't be against it. Actually, I, I would find it fascinating. To be honest with you, it really is. It, it's a trip. It'd be it, like it's the a major trip. It'd be, it, it blows all drugs away. <laughs> I, I can imagine it'd be like the spiritual ancestry dot com, which would be crazy. Exactly. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And um, I, I, you're gonna, you're probably gonna think I'm crazy. For no, Jesus, I don't but. think you're crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> you already know I'm crazy. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, Go ahead. So am I. I don't give. I don't no, really I said care. it for you. Yeah. I said it for you. Everybody knows I'm a little off my rocker, but um, I've had a couple of past life regressions done, and the one that sticks out really, really heavy in my brain was from the Middle Ages. And I have this weird scar on my foot that is like in the shape of a crescent moon that nobody in my family can explain where I got it from. And I've had it as long as I can remember. Okay. And my daughter's father came out to, to visit, stay for a while. He was thinking about moving out here. And we got on the topic one night. And I mentioned the scar on my foot, and he grabbed the correct foot and was like, let me see that. And I didn't tell him which foot it was. Mm -hmm. And he's he's very spiritual like I am, and he's done past life regressions and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we figured out that uh, he actually explained some of the same scenery that I saw in mine what and yeah and we figured out that he was actually the one who put that scar on my foot well, it was not, a marking yeah, it not, was a marking of ownership yeah now you're talking about like group karma or i mean you choose with a group of people who to reincarnate with so that i know about that that makes well, sense the the theory i have of that or that I mean, and it's not my theory. It's it's a theory that's out there. It's uh, circles of souls. Yeah. And those right. souls will reconnect through each lifetime for whatever purpose at whatever time. Right. Yeah. But I, that's yeah. why you have when you run into somebody you have never met before, and you're like, I know you. Right. That's why. Right. Yeah, I I have that feeling with some people I've known. In my, my life, for sure. Some you just connect. Mm -hmm. Like my last uh, roommate, quote unquote, when I started hanging around with all of them again, our friends would go, what's going on between you and Tim? And she would respond, we've always had a connection. So it's that, it's that type of thing. I, 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 I get it. Yeah. There's just a vibe that, yeah. and I really do believe she was part of my past life or lives no matter what. So we just can't. We just can't get our shit together. <laughs> so as far as being <laughs> being together, but um, yeah, I I get no, that. One of these lifetimes, maybe maybe you will be together. Yeah, you know. I don't know. Um, we're way too different. I mean, she's no offense, but she's you. Fun. She's you times ten. I mean, she's just way, way out there. Where I couldn't even. <laughs> she would come home, and I I don't want to bitch about her, and she knows all this anyway. Whatever, but. I w she would come home because I usually beat her home from work, 
and I would have Fox News on, and she goes, Fox News is not allowed on in my house. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? Even I watch Fox News. That's what I said. She's you times 10. Yeah, I I even watch CNN. I think they're all fucking nuts, but I still watch them. I watch all of it because I want to get my own thing. I'm not going to let... Exactly. I'm not going to watch Sean Hannity, Rachel Maddow. I'm not going to let anybody, even Alex Jones for that matter. I listen to all of them. You're not going to tell me how to think. But... I want to know how you think so I can figure out it for me. Right. But just because they say this, it's not like the goddamn, like, going, just whatever, sacrilegious. <laughs> but, you know, it's like you're going to church and being told what to say or do or whatever. And you know, you're not doing that. Nobody's doing that to me. I don't care what it is. Exactly. But, but yeah, she's just so, like, her hate and everything else. And it's like, I can't stand Trump. And, blah, blah, blah. and and CNN and then Fox News is not allowed in my house. I'm like, whoa. I mean, that's really, that's pushing it for me, man. You're not telling me what I'm going to watch and not watch. So. Well, and I mean, if you don't watch all sides, then how are you going to know where these people who are hard right or hard left, how are you going to understand where they're coming from? Right. If you don't know what they're seeing and what they're hearing, then how are you going to be able to have an intelligent conversation and get past it? Well, you can't. You can't. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I, I do get, I do get the past life thing and where you do connect with somebody. Like you, your first time yeah. you meet him, you feel like you know him your entire life, which is weird. Yeah. But then some people. Yeah, it's very. Some people I meet and I want to run from them. Very few. <laughs> Oh, very well. My son-in-law was one of them. I never liked him from day one. I just like there's something wrong with this guy, and I should have ran. I should have protected my family and kept them away from him. But I figured they would have their own better ju- judgment or discernment on the situation, and I was wrong. So, uh, but there's people like that too, and I, very few, very few. But I have ran into them. It's like I need to stay away from this person. So. Oh, yeah. Bad, I, uh, bad juju. I'm very sensitive to other people's energies. Right. Exactly. So am I. And there's, when you get those feelings, there's a reason. Right. And you need to listen to your gut. Yeah. Right. And, you know, with our kids, it's a little more difficult because they have to make their mistakes. They have to go through their own learning process. I don't have a problem with that, but when your wife or husband, yeah. do, you know, doesn't have your back or yeah. see it too, or did see it and then was convinced to get swayed into a different direction, there's something wrong with that. So. Well, yeah, there, there's definitely that part, part to it as well. Right. Because sometimes those, those bad energies getting into our kids' lives has an effect on us. Right. Yeah. But we can't control that. So. No, you can't. And I do think, too, that people, they've been together long enough, one outgrows the other, and no matter what, you try to drag them back up or that, but I think you drift apart and well, yeah. just got to keep going. So, yep. which is sad, but it happens. It is, but it's it's just a part of life, you know? Yep. And now it's my chance to reinvent myself, and I don't have anybody looking at me like, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Blah, blah. I'm like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do as long as I don't hurt anybody. And when I used to do my show, that really bothered her. I don't want to get into this too much, but I, I, I she was holding me back. Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, you know, are you going to cause trouble? And I like, no, I'm not. I didn't cause any fucking trouble. These people did. I mean, what the hell's wrong with you? We lost half of the house. And people lost their homes or jobs, and we lost half of our uh, net worth. You know, our business is going under. I'm not going to sit here and fucking just say nothing. Right? Yeah. No, I'm not. I've had enough. <laughs> and and you know what motivated me? Well, when I still talk to my grandkids because my daughter won't, and my son-in-law won't let me talk to them, and I'm praying the day she turns 18, but... It, it's like the last thing I wanted to hear from my granddaughter is say, Poppy, why didn't you do anything? Because I can't live with that. Oh, no. No, that that would be devastating. Yeah. 
And I'm gonna, but now I can go. You know what? I did, and I lost everything because of it. I mean, not just because of that, but I. I yeah. That's not why. But I, I did what I had to do, and I'm not going to sit here because you know why? Because now it's your life, and all you kids and all your generations, generations beyond that, are going to have to pay for these fucking assholes that caused this problem, and nothing happened to them. Yep. That's wrong. So enough's well, enough. Karma, karma will come back. Oh, I know that. But at I'm, some point. But I'm still not going to sit here and just not do anything because you know enough's enough. I've hit my, I've hit my limits with these people, and um, they shouldn't have got bailed out and recapitalized, and some people shouldn't have paid themselves two hundred million dollars to fix something that they were involved in fucking up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, oh, I fixed it, and you know, I, was, I saved everything in a world global economy, and uh, I just so happened also pay myself two hundred million bucks. Oh wow! And and never mind the fact that I'm the reason that these problems happen to begin with. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he he was part of the problem, and then uh, then the solution, and, and then he paid himself for it. It's like wow! I wish I wish I could do that. Right. My company rich. ran in the ground. G- give me recapitalization, and then you know what? I'm going to pay myself a gazillion dollars because I got recapitalized, and I get to start over. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? <laughs> That, Life. <laughs> that's bullshit. <laughs> Whatever. So, and we're paying for it, and our kids are paying for it, and our kids' kids will pay for it, and blah 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 blah. Where nothing happened to these people. Nobody went to jail. Nobody. They didn't lose their homes. They actually got a lot richer, and it's ten times worse than it was back in '08. So it's just really, and I'm paying attention, and it's very scary. Yeah. But yeah, wow. it is. It's, I I really worry for for the next few generations as far as what they're going to have to deal with. What we dealt with was enough, <laughs> right? You know, we we were the first generation to have to deal with things changing a whole lot. <laughs> oh, it's amazing! I, my lifetime, I won't have any regrets because the things that I have seen. Oh, it yeah. is just freaking unbelievable. And I'm not dead yet. I still got another probably 25, God willing, 30 years. A lot of shit can happen. Right. Look what's happened in the past 25 to 30 years from now. It's crazy. Well, I mean, shoot, look, look, look at what's happened in just the last 10. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. with AI coming and everything else, God help us, and, and all this other stuff, it's just going to be... Um, <laughs> it's going to be a very unpredictable. It's going to go, I don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to be exponential in light years in technology compared to what's happened in the past, like you said, 10 years. It's just going to make everything look like a well, yeah. child's play. So, I mean, we grew, we grew up with Star Trek um, and these cool futuristic shows that showed the possibilities. And then for some reason, we just kind of stopped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, can you imagine where we would be if all that technology and and the drive for technology had not been blocked? Oh, well, I was just going to say it. I thought you were going to say not happen. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, it's been suppressed. I mean, what Nikola Tesla did alone <laughs> would have put us in the star trek realm there's no doubt about it right but instead here we are you know we had all those great hopes and dreams of by the year 2000 we'd be in flying cars and stuff which they are actually starting to <laughs> to gravitate that way yeah. finally yeah. which I'm, I'm not sure if i'm really happy about that or not <laughs> hey I'm going to have to rudely... Driving uh, on roads is bad enough, let alone if everybody's up in the air. (laughs) Right. Uh, My boss is calling me, so I'm going to have to end the show here. Um, But uh, I kind of like hung up on him, so I'm going to have to call him back. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, it's time. That's a sign. It's time to go. It's been almost... It's been one and three quarters hours, so I got to go. I got to start. I got to start my day. But uh, all right. (laughs) So uh, thanks for calling in and, of course, being part of the show. And I always value your uh, your side of things, whether, like I said, we agree or not. But it's great. Yeah. I like it. Well, hopefully we, other we people. We definitely need to connect about the Zoom. Okay. So that way we can add the call-in number. 
Got it. So text me whenever you get like 15, 20 minutes so we can go through it. Got it. Okay. You have a great day. All right. You too. Thanks. Bye. Okay. All right. So really got to go. Thanks for listening to the original Red Pill Show and share the show. And I'll be back. You have been listening to the original Red 